Now that you've created a dashboard, we should add it to the navigation. To do so, click on the nav menu link on the left hand side, and then you'll see the navigation item that we've already created by checking the box at the bottom of the dashboard create page. This may be where you want the dashboard to live in the navigation, and if so, it's already there. If not, we can simply click reorder menus and drag that dashboard wherever you'd like it in the navigation. In this particular case, I'm actually going to add a drop-down link ahead of that as well to group my dashboards. I'll simply click new menu link and then select the link type that I want. By default, dashboard is selected. If I had not created the navigation link previously, I could do so with the dashboard link type. In this particular case, I'm also going to use a different link type called drop-down placeholder. The drop-down placeholder is a link that doesn't link off anywhere, but it's used simply to bucket other items. In this particular case, I'm making a finance drop-down, and so I'll title it finance. At this point, I can restrict access to this, but since I'm using a Tableau dashboard, all of the permissions are already inherited from Tableau, and there's no need to do this extra step. After I hit Create, I need to add this Finance dropdown where I want it in the navigation. I'm going to drag it right next to Home, and then I'm going to drag Sector Performance right underneath Finance. If I open up the home page, I should see this reflected on the front end now. Of course, there's other types of content besides just Tableau dashboards, and you can add those other link types as well in this area. To create the content for those, look on the left-hand pane of the navigation items. You'll see things like static pages, files, mixed content, and even notices. I'm going to click into pages real quick and walk through that functionality. The pages functionality is used to build out pages that are not necessarily Tableau dashboards, but are simple static pages that you can configure as much as you'd like. I'll give this page a title. A lot of times people use these for FAQs or data dictionaries or team member pages because they are so flexible. This particular one I'll call FAQ. You can see a URL for this page on the portal has been pre-populated for me. If you'd like to change this, you can do that here. The content type is usually just a static page. However, we do have a blog type and also an iframe type. The iframe type is just a simple iframe URL, and you can use this for very simple embedding of other business intelligence platforms. Simply paste the URL to that iframe in here, and it will automatically have a full screen version of that when your users go to this page. For now though, I'll stick with a static type. You can see at the bottom of the page in the content area, I have this editor that's very similar to something like Microsoft Word. This allows me, me to very easily format my text, how I want it to show up on my FAQ page. I can even do bulleted list or something more advanced by clicking on the code view. I can include images and videos in this area as well, and a lot of the extra formatting that you'd expect in something like Microsoft Word. If I want to get really crazy though, I have the ability to toggle off this editor and to toggle on a full HTML, CSS, and JavaScript view. This allows you to build out really creative pages and give you a ton of flexibility. You can include extra JavaScript libraries in here, you can write your own JavaScript, you can style the page with CSS, and you can have unlimited HTML in this content area. Another really interesting content type is the files. To create a new file, we simply come into the files section, click new file, and then title our file. We can then upload any particular type of file. This could be a PowerPoint, it could be a PDF, an Excel document, whatever it is that you want to host on the portal can be uploaded here. We can give it a unique URL and then email that out to our users or link it in the navigation as we just saw previously. 
Something that's really nice about this area is the ability to restrict access directly on the PowerPoint file itself, on the file you've uploaded. To do that, I simply toggle on restrict access, and you'll see here a list of groups from Tableau Server. If we want only our web editors to be able to download this file, we simply click web editors. And when we upload that file, we can even email out that link. And those web editors will be the only people that are able to download that file. If somebody else gets a hold of that link by a misforward or accidentally including them in the CC list of your email, they won't be able to download that link if they don't have the permissions needed. Also, these links will be limited in the navigation as well. When you include them in the navigation, they'll automatically check those permissions and be hidden from your end users if you need them to. Once we hit create, that will upload the file to the system and it will be available in the navigation area for you to choose as a navigation link.